This is the Invite Health Podcast, and I am Amanda Williams. On today's episode, I am going to talk about how you can assess your level of stress. It is a really interesting way to see how the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting your cellular health, and I'm going to get into all of that. But before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe to the Invite Health Podcast today. You can leave us a review. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. Remember, all of the information on today's episode will be linked in the episode description, and you can visit invitehealth.com slash podcast for more information. So let's get right to it. We know that this COVID-19 pandemic is stressing out an awful lot of people. And we know the long-term implications of chronic stress is not a good thing for ourselves. So let's talk about a cellular level. Go back to your basic science classes that maybe you had back in high school and talk about just the cell structure. And we all understand that we have the cell and it has different components to it, things to make energy such as the mitochondria. And it also contains a nucleus which contains your genetic material. So the DNA, the RNA, we can think about all of those things. And we have what are known as telomeres. And telomeres are these protective casings at the ends of different strands of DNA. And every single time that your cell divides, it loses a little bit of that protective casing. So there's this enzyme called telomerase, and that can help to replenish your telomeres. But here's the catch. Chronic stress and cortisol exposure can decrease your supply of telomerase. So right now, everyone is a bit stressed out, and rightfully so. But we want to see what is actually occurring at that cellular level. We want to be able to assess how much damage has occurred and what we can be doing to mitigate that. So how can we assess this and what can we be doing? Well, we know that stress management is a really key tool to all of this because we want to try to prevent that telomere shortening. And we know that there are certain nutrients that can be beneficial when it comes to the length of those telomeres. Remember, that's that protective end cap. So we look at things such as B vitamins, for example. We can look at vitamin D. Vitamin D has been shown to promote that very key enzymatic activity of telomerase. So if we have more telomerase, remember that can help to offset the impact of stress. But if we have 50% estimated, it can be higher in certain groups, but at least we'll just say 50% of the U.S. population is either insufficient or deficient in vitamin D, well, then that's not giving us too much protection when it comes to being able to make more of that telomerase enzyme to protect the telomere itself. So we look at different chronic disease states. We know that people who have kidney disease, heart disease, will have that decrease in that telomerase enzyme activity, which means those DNA, that crucial DNA within the cell starts to get damaged. And when that happens, then we go through a stage of apoptosis or programmed cell death. We know antioxidants can be beneficial. We can look at things such as vitamin C, vitamin E, when it comes to promoting the length of our telomeres. Now there's other things too. Resveratrol happens to be one of those. Resveratrol is a very powerful polyphenol or an antioxidant that is derived from, you can get it from grapes, from the skin of grapes, it comes from different plants such as um, Japanese knotwood, which is found throughout the world. And this contains these very powerful antioxidants, which have been shown to be able to activate something that's known as sirtuin. So sirtuin-1 in particular is very key and critical when we think about telomerase activity and maintaining the length of those protective end caps to try to protect that cellular DNA. So we know all of these things. We know that omega-3 fatty acids, certainly that can be beneficial. So we can kind of follow that line of thinking of Mediterranean diet. 
yes, if we are adhering to a Mediterranean diet, we're going to be getting those wonderful antioxidants and healthy fats that can help to support the activity of telomerase and the length of the telomeres themselves. So, but there are other things that we can look at in order to assess. Maybe you're always under stress. Maybe you have a high stress job. Maybe your family stresses you out. There's a lot of different reasons as to why people have stress and how your body manages that stress. I want to give you a tip and a key tool for you to be able to assess your telomeres and what you can be doing if it shows that your telomeres are really kind of getting beat up. But we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. And welcome back. So we are talking about telomeres and the length of those telomeres are directly correlated to length of lifespan. And we know that different stressors throughout our life can have havoc on the length of those telomeres. So the shorter the telomere gets, that protective end cap, the shorter the lifespan of that particular cell. And this isn't just limited to a particular system in the body. This is all of our cells. When we group them all together, the trillions of cells that are in the human body. We want to make sure that we are maintaining the lifespan of those cells because that is good for our longevity. We know that there are so many different reasons as to why people can have stress. And we know that right now, dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people are experiencing a heightened level of stress and the negative effects that that stress may be creating in your body. So I talked about how diet makes a difference, having those high antioxidant foods from fruits and vegetables, having omega-3 fatty acids coming from things like fish oil, krill oil. You can use flaxseed. If you are a vegetarian and you are looking more for a vegetarian or a plant-based option for your omega-3, then certainly consider something like flaxseed. But we do know that certain diets can exacerbate the shortening of our telomeres. So when people are adhering to a standard American diet that is high in processed foods, bad fats, sugary foods, that this actually does quite a lot of beating up to those protective end caps, which is not a good thing. So when we look at longevity throughout the world, you see different areas where dietary intake really makes a significant difference. So we wanna always think about our foods, but we also want to be very mindful about how we handle stress and ways that we can try to reduce stress. So whether that is you know, exercising, whether that is trying to unwind or meditate or doing yoga. There's different ways that people can try to offset the negative effects of stress. But we can also do something that's really very cool. And that is we can do a simple test. We can do a test that is actually going to look at your cellular age. How much have your little end caps, those little telomeres, how much have they been beaten up over time? because of stress, because of anxiety, because of maybe you do have a chronic disease state, maybe you have heart disease, maybe you have diabetes, maybe you have chronic kidney disease. We want to look and see where are we actually mapping out in terms of our cellular age. And we can do this now through a simple test. And this is a simple cheek swab test that we actually offer at Invite Health. It's called our cellular aging test. And it's so easy 
to actually do. You just get the test kit, you do the simple cheek swab, it gets sent off to our lab out in Oregon, and within about five days, we have the results and we can look and it measures your protective end caps. It's actually measuring those telomeres. And we can compare the amount of stress that those telomeres have been subjected to comparative to what your normal cellular age is. And this is a really great way for people to be able to assess what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and what you can do to try to correct that. Because if you do this test and we see, oh my goodness, your you know, little telomeres are really getting beat up, now you can take the initiative and take the appropriate actions to make those corrections so we're not continuously adding insult to injury. There's so much research out there looking at how telomeres affect our overall quality of life. And when those end caps begin to get beat up and we can no longer protect our cellular genetic material, then we see the irreversible damage that occurs. And we don't want that to happen, which is why doing the cellular aging test is a great way for you to gain that insight. Maybe you've had a really stressful job, as I mentioned. Maybe your family is stressing you out to no end. And if you do this test and you look and say, oh my goodness, you know, my cell age is this, and this is my actual age. This is not a good thing. What can I be doing? And for many people, once they do this test and they see that impact and they say, wow, I need to make some lifestyle modifications because my cells are aging much faster than my actual age. And I love when people have an interest in this because of the fact I am a huge fan of anything genetic related. So when we're looking at the role of our genes and we look at that cellular level and what is occurring in the nucleus and why it's so important to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves throughout our life. And then when people do the test and they say, oh, I haven't been doing that good of a job. This is to me, very rewarding because now that gives you that extra push to make those adjustments. So we'll take a quick break. When we get back, I want to run through some of those nutrients again that can be very supportive to maintaining those protective end caps known as the telomeres and what you can be doing in terms of your diet, exercise, all of that on the flip side of this break. We'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. And welcome back. Now here's a little bit of interesting information. This came from the European Journal of Nutrition back in 2016 and looking at an association between the telomere length and carotenoid status. So what does that mean? So carotenoids, we know that these are these powerful antioxidant molecules that are found in foods. And we know that many Americans follow a standard American diet, so they're not obtaining a lot of carotenoids. The reason we know this, there was a study out of University of North Carolina that said that only 12% of Americans are considered to be metabolically. The majority of Americans, 78% of Americans are not getting the right nutrients, which can impact the length of your telomeres. So in this study, they were looking at the intake of dietary carotenoids and comparing that to the length of the telomeres. And they found that those who had the highest carotenoid level had longer telomeres by about five to eight 
percent. That is amazing, just from nutrients alone. So the intake of carotenoid nutrients was closely associated with longer telomeres. So foods really do matter, as well as different vitamins and key nutrients. So I had mentioned the importance of things like B vitamin and how B vitamins play an integral role. So if we think of like a B complex, which is all of the different B vitamins, understanding how those B vitamins, say things like folate, B12, for example, how they play a role in terms of maintaining the health of our vascular system. And if we have inflammation that's occurring within the vascular system, we can detect this through a test which is known as homocysteine. So if your homocysteine level is elevated, we know that that can lead to an acceleration of telomere shortening. We also know that vitamin D, this is key because this is helping to promote that activity of telomerase. Remember, vitamin D is not just your bone health vitamin. Vitamin D plays a critical role in our immune system and clearly in our longevity as well. But we can look at antioxidants such as vitamin C and vitamin E. So the more that we can offset oxidative stress in the body, the more we are actually protecting the cell itself. And internally, we are protecting the length of that telomere. I had mentioned resveratrol, how that can activate that sirtuin-1, which has been shown to be beneficial when it comes to the longevity the lifespan of a cell. So there's many different things, but one of the key things that we don't want to overlook is the role of stress and different risk factors that we can try to control. And if we are under a significant amount of stress, what can we do to try to manage that? What nutrients are we potentially missing in our diet that could help the body better manage stress? Is it something as simple as magnesium, adding in magnesium? Is it maybe adding in some L-theanine, really wonderful antioxidant, and also it's an amino acid is found in green tea, but it does so much in terms of a nice calming effect in the body. So if you're under stress during this time, the one thing that you can be doing is trying to eat healthy. Get those carotenoids in. You can look at things like the Reds HX, the Greens HX, packed with those carotenoids. We can take extra vitamin C, extra vitamin E right now. We can make sure that we are getting adequate vitamin D on a regular basis. Incorporate omega-3 fatty acids into your routine. All of these things are things that we have control over. And we also have control over assessing the actual state of health of our cells. So by doing that cellular aging test, we're going to be looking at the length of those telomeres and we're going to correlate that, the actual cell age compared to your actual age. And this will give you so much information as to what you can be doing to make those lifestyle modifications to promote healthy cell longevity. So I am going to wrap it up for today, but I do want to thank you for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Make sure that you subscribe. You can leave us a review. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. We will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Oh, 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 oh,